Welcome to the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook for May through August. Over the last 30 days, we continue to see cooler temperatures across all of the Great Basin and really all of the West. And we've seen much drier conditions over southern and western areas of the Great Basin with well below normal precipitation. We've also seen drier conditions even further north, although we've had some spotty areas of showers as some systems have moved by in the northern areas over the last couple of weeks. Our percent of average precipitation since the beginning of the water year, October 1st, still shows well above normal precipitation in Arizona and Utah and across central parts of Nevada into western Nevada and California and smaller parts of Idaho and Wyoming. Looking at our precipitation last year during the monsoon, we did see a very healthy monsoon, which was targeted mostly for the western areas, but we saw near to above normal precipitation across most of Utah and really far above normal precipitation for much of Nevada. Precipitation really didn't make its way that far north into Idaho, so we had below normal precipitation for the monsoon season last year and generally near normal for Wyoming. Looking at the combination of the winter and spring and monsoon precipitation, we did see above normal precipitation across much of the southern half of the Great Basin. Only areas that really were left out of some of this above normal precipitation were parts of northwest Nevada and even parts of southwest or even central Idaho. Looking at some of the fine fuel carryover, the, the availability of last year to carry over into this year, we saw quite a bit of growth last year, which likely would carry over in some areas of southern Idaho and also down into northwest Nevada. Further south, much of the rest of the carryover likely got compacted by much of the winter snowfall we saw in the lower elevations, which was on the ground for quite some time. Some areas in southern Nevada, a little bit further south, uh, probably didn't see quite as much, so we'll have some carryover down there as well. But also where we see the precipitation is, is very telling when we see the precipitation and where as far as what grows for fine fuels for the upcoming season. And looking back a little bit at the monsoon precipitation, monsoon precipitation really affects grass growth for the next year for parts of Utah and down into Arizona and even parts of southern Nevada. But further north into Nevada and northern Utah, really many of these areas are not going to see much fine fuel growth as a result of the monsoon precipitation. It's really the winter precipitation where these areas need that moisture for fine fuel growth. And these areas in central and northern Nevada and northern Utah, eastern Idaho did receive that winter precipitation. So we will see a combination of fine fuel growth both in the southern areas due to the monsoon moisture and into areas further north due to the winter and spring precipitation. So our snowpack obviously is still very healthy. It has been dropping off rapidly in some areas, but still well above normal. We're above the 200 to 300% of normal for the time of year. Now again, that's less than what we had this time last month, just due to the fact that things are melting and we don't normally see as much snow this time of year. Typically our snow peaks in early April. So we are again seeing that snowpack diminish with the warmer and drier conditions we've seen recently, but still well above normal across Nevada, Utah, and Arizona, and near to just above normal still across Idaho into Wyoming. So now looking at just a kind of a combination across the Great Basin of how this snowpack relates to what we have seen in the past. So for western Nevada and the Sierra, we saw uh, very, very high snowpack, well above the average line, which is the green line. You can see even in western Nevada that snowpack is coming down for 2023, but many areas in the Sierra were setting new records for snowfall, and these records, again, uh, exceeded what we saw back in the 80s. Looking at northeast Nevada, again, you also saw the snowpack setting new records as well and has been coming down pretty rapidly with the warmer and drier conditions. Very similar across the Great Basin, so in the far south, the snowpack is still around, but again, is almost on its way out, as we've seen that war those warmer and drier conditions really drop that snowpack off in southern areas of the Great Basin. But again, set new records uh, late into the spring. Northern Utah seeing the same trends as parts of northern Nevada, set new records, and is on its way down. And central Idaho wasn't quite as far above normal, but definitely peaked late in the season to above normal and is on its way down with the melt. And Wyoming was really one of the few areas that really stayed on track near normal much of the season. Southern Utah, we're also seeing, again, well above normal and that drop off. So again, more significant melt off down in the southern areas of the Great Basin. 
So with this melt off of the snow and the warmer temperatures and also a change in pattern as we go into the next few weeks with a return of storms moving through, there will be an increased potential for flooding, mainly of rivers, streams and creeks, but certainly some urban areas. And this will all depend on the temperatures and the amount of precipitation we see over the next few weeks. So these areas you see uh, for early May for the flood risk for Idaho, Wyoming and Utah even parts of western Nevada will change um, as the days and weeks go by as far as which areas are most at risk but definitely that potential is there before we dry out is we still need to melt this snowpack and the water has to go somewhere so that flood concern is still very real here for the next few weeks for the Great Basin. So looking at some of our fuel moistures with the warmer and drier conditions our 10-hour fuel moistures more representative of our grasses have really seen a decrease in fuel moisture across Nevada and Arizona into southern areas of the basin that have been on the dry side. Still grasses are in green up and pretty healthy, uh, still quite a bit of moisture over northern areas. We are seeing the grasses in the far south already cure out. Even some areas further north into Nevada are seeing a varying state of curing, some purpling, um, even, some, even some areas cured out on south slopes, uh, but really we're still kind of in the mix of green up and areas curing, especially in the far south. 100 hour fuel moisture is again driest where we've seen those drier and warmer temperatures in western and southern areas and a similar pattern for the thousand hours. So we're still quite a ways from the start of fire season, certainly in the higher elevations with the snowpack. So the thousand hour fuel moisture will be taking some time in the higher elevations to decrease. Soil moisture is still very high across the Great Basin, so this should continue to support growth of fine fuels. With the change in weather pattern coming up here over the next couple of weeks, and seeing some moisture at times move across the Great Basin, we might spark another period of green up, even in areas that have seen their fuels cure. So this could be a year where we have multiple crops of cheatgrass, and we'll be monitoring that, especially across Nevada, Utah, down into Arizona. The drought monitor on the left, current drought monitor, we've seen a significant improvement in drought. Most areas abnormally dry or just some moderate drought. There are still some pockets of severe drought in the far south, part of far southern part of Nevada into parts of Utah and Wyoming, but really a stark difference from what we saw this time last year. And the drought outlook on the right through the end of July shows most areas in the south probably drought will persist at its current levels, uh, but really we won't see much intensification at this point across the Great Basin and even still some slight improvements over the northern half of the region. So looking at the last year, you can see the difference. Uh, April 2023 current drought is on the left. On the right is where we were a year ago in April of 2022. So again, significant improvements over the entire West with respect to drought. And this is both good news and bad news. Certainly more water is around, but we tend to see more fine fuel growth. Obviously in years we have more precipitation. In years we are really turning that page coming out of drought. These black boxes for Nevada show where we see well above normal acreage burned during our fire season so that's really attributed to the increased grass loads and the amount of continuity we see across the basin with the increase in moisture so again we are coming out of drought this year 2023 is here on the right so similar to the 2016 2017 2005 uh, 2011 to some degree although the drought wasn't quite as significant so again we are when we start to come out of droughts these are usually the years where our acreage starts to pick up uh, not to say it might be the biggest year ever, but this is certainly the turning point where we will, we will start to see more fires, um, certainly in the lower elevations, and see more growth of these fires when they, when they ignite, once fuels are cured. Utah, very similar pattern, and Idaho, very similar pattern as well. Again, higher acreage in years that we don't have drought or lesser drought and more fine fuel growth. Uh, we don't tend to see huge um, issues in the higher elevations when we have more moisture but that potential is certainly there late in the fire season when things dry out and this year certainly a delay uh, for the start of fire season in the higher elevations where we still have significant snowpack to melt off. So now that we've kind of put everything together uh, we'll look briefly at El Nino and La Nina. We've been in a state of La Nina for a few years now and all models now indicating each of these lines are forecast models indicating the warming of the ocean temperatures, the potential there. So certainly the forecast is to come out of La Nina and possibly either stay in neutral or go back into an El Nino. That part is a little bit uh, suspect as to how quick that rise in temperatures will occur and where it will put us. But in any case, we are seeing a shift. So we will continue to see a somewhat of an active weather pattern here going through the next couple of months while that shift is occurring. 
The 8 to 14 day outlook taking us from May 9th to the 15th. Still kind of cooler in the west, still some moisture in the west, but we might see some drier conditions over the, mainly the southern areas of the Great Basin. I would say the northern half of the Great Basin will continue to see at least storm systems moving through for some light shower activity. Looking at the four month outlook from Predictive Services, the top row are temperatures, bottom row is precipitation forecast for May through August. You can see temperatures will gradually be warming to above normal as we get to the peak of fire season July and August. Precipitation, however, really with this more active uh, transient weather pattern, kind of keeping troughs moving into the west coast for some time, could keep moisture really moving across the great, at least the northern half to two thirds of the Great Basin through May, possibly June, and really into July. So this kind of keeps a lid on significant drying across the Great Basin, but also it might delay the start of the monsoon. If we keep getting troughs moving into the west coast, we might not see that high pressure ridge develop in the Four Corners area as early as we need it for that heat to really take hold of the west and really for the monsoon to develop. So right now it's looking more likely possibly of a delayed monsoon and a weaker monsoon. So again, precipitation, if it is delayed, um, again, might not really shut off until that July, August time period. So we could see a late start to a fire season for southern areas of the Great Basin, or at least a maybe a second, a second start to the fire season. Um, things are dry right now, but we might see some moisture. So we could see some, kind of a reemergence of fire season in July and August for southern areas that would normally be winding down. So we're definitely keeping our eye on that part of the basin, but also keeping our eye on the rest of northern Nevada and northern Utah into Idaho when conditions dry out with that fine fuel growth, um, especially if we get multiple chops of crops of cheatgrass with this moisture, um, it could be an issue depending on when the drying occurs. So here's our official outlook for the next four months. Top rows May and June, July and August in the bottom. So still sticking with below normal fire potential for the higher elevations of northern Arizona into southern Nevada and Utah, and also the Sierra. So again, below normal until that snowpack melts, and then we'll likely return to a normal, uh, could even see below normal continuing into July, depending on the weather pattern. But we will make this shift to above normal fire potential in the lower elevations of southern Idaho into northern Nevada, where we one, have some carryover, and also will have some fine fuel growth. Now these areas of above normal will likely expand, it just really depends on that weather pattern going through the next few months. If we don't dry out quickly enough, or we still get some storm systems to keep a lid on the fire potential, we might not see more red on the map until August. But we're definitely keeping our eye on that growth and when the drying occurs, because we could see a very quick shift from flood potential to increased fire potential in the lower elevations especially. So that concludes our webcast for the seasonal for the months of May through August. Check back next month for our latest updates.